Okay, hello and welcome. Today we are going to be comparing the Nook Simple Touch and the Kindle 2011 version. We're going to be looking at read ability functions, screen functions, how you navigate around books, as well as some other things. And at the end I will give you my conclusion on which I think is best. Enjoy! <laughs> Simple Touch on the right and the Kindle on the left, so we can see that this is quite a lot thicker if I just put them on top of each other. You can see that at the bottom they both use mini display ports here and here, although the Kindle power button is at the bottom and it has a little indicator light for when it's charging or when you turn it on and the Nux power button is at the top here at the top of the device and it does not have the same indicator button. Both devices have a 6 inch e-ink display both devices, when you are locked in this position, show you an image. So from screen point of view, the Nook offers you the, the user two page turning methods. So you can swipe or tap the screen, as well as use these two sets of side buttons at the top. The Kindle, this version, is 2011 Kindle base model, it costs £69 before uh, when I bought it, um, uses only sets of buttons on the side. The scroll forward button is bigger than the button to uh, go back page, which I think is a nice little attention to detail thing. Um, in terms of the actual buttons, uh, these buttons are quite, you, they're not as responsive as and tactile as the buttons on the Kindle, if you can hear this. There's a definite response when you click the buttons as opposed to the kind of duller button. But that's, I suppose, because the simple touch is meant to be used touchscreen. Okay, um, uh, otherwise controls, uh, there is a home button. On the neck, very simple. Whereas on the Kindle, we have a D pad with a select button in the middle. Home menu to bring up an on screen keyboard, which is difficult to use because you have to navigate around with the D pad. And then a back button, these are all functions because we are missing them with a lack of touchscreen. Uh, so let's wake up both of these. First of all, let's see. Okay, so when you press the power button, you have to drag to unlock. So I'm going to drag and unlock the Kindle at the same time. So let's wake both of these devices up. Uh, so we can see that the Nook is very, very fast responsive. Um, it is newer than the Kindle, but still very responsive when you turn it on. It's just swipe and it's straight there. It takes a minute to load up the Kindle screen. Um, so looking around the functions, uh, uh, when you're in a book, if I tap tap the screen, I get these informations, content, if I click on that, I get a list of chapters, and then any bookmarks or highlights I've made, I haven't made any, so I just X out of this, we have find, Go to a certain page, text, that changes the text size. Uh, I'll come to those functions in, in a moment. Uh, now on the Kindle, we have similar functions. I can go to, I get a description of the book, which then connects me just to the store where I can read the description. I get search this book 
view all of these things and I can change the font size when I'm into a page with writing. So let's move through these books a bit. So there we go. That took a long time. A long introduction on the book version. So we have chapter one. So I want you to basically ignore uh, what the book looks like. I want you to focus on I want you to focus on the reading values because obviously they're slightly different versions of the book. Uh, so functions within a book, I can go to changing font size. So I go all the way down from the smallest, which is quite small, which is what the book looks to be set up at the moment, to the very largest, which is huge. It's completely massive font size. I don't think anyone, unless you find it seeing text extremely difficult, I don't think anyone's going to be using that. So on the Nook I can go to really, really, really small font size there, which I would struggle to read very much, uh, and then not quite as big as the Kindle. So let's go home on both devices and have a look around. My main home screen shows me all my books on my Kindle, shows me all the books I already have, whereas uh, on the Nook it takes me to what I'm reading now. And then gives me suggestions on what I uh, and things like that and new things that are in uh, new things that are in the next store. So if I want to actually get to my books, I go into library. Uh, both are very simple. Just does what it says in the tin. You have to you move down to click on a book. And you just tap on the book in the Nook library. I conclude this short video comparing the Kindle and the Nook Simple Touch. I think the Kindle has a better store with a wider variety of books. I, th I think it's slower to load but has generally more um, finished and more uh, worked upon features because it, Kindle are the kind of granddad of e-readers. The Nook has really nice touch functionality. I think to hold, I slightly prefer it. I like this dip and the soft touch back. Um, it has a much smaller variety of books uh, and not as many cheap books like or free books, which I was disappointed with. It's faster to load. I don't like the I don't like the page turns on the Nook as much, but generally I think it's a really nice, good entry level e-reader for what it is. So in conclusion I think that the Kindle is the best for its wide variety of store, variety of books on the store. Uh, however I do like that on the Nook you are allowed to import your own books, Kindle doesn't allow that. Uh, I think the, the Nook is nicer to hold and the the touch functionality gives you more interaction but the Kindle based on text sizes and uh, functions inside the book as well as the variety of books on the store makes it just and only just ahead at the moment.